I worked for several years as a clinical pharmacist with acute hip fracture patient, ED patient, and so on. Last year, I finished my PhD, and now I'm a postdoc in the acute CAC lead by Professor Ove Andersen. And I'm working at Hvidovre Hospital. It's approximately 10 kilometers from here, and we have approximately 800 beds. So what's the problem at all? In 2014, we do have 114,000 older medical patients in Denmark. More than half of these patients are using polypharmacy defined as four or five or more medications. We do also know that up to 15% of all these ED patients they are admitted may due to their medication. And all we need to deprescribe more medication in this cohort according to patients' current health conditions. And we also know that around one third of all medication-related admissions can be due to inappropriate prescribing of renal risk medication. And it leads lead us to it's important with accurate measurements of kidney function. Renal risk medication, it's medication that have to be prescribed according to the kidney function or medication that can be contraindicated in patients with renal impairment. It's, for example, ibuprofen. You could buy it over the counter in almost every country. It's ramipril, many, maybe one of the most used drugs against high blood pressure, but it's also metformin used worldwide against treatment of diabetes type 2, the thorax, and so on. So it's approximate 14 percent of all medications that have to be prescribed according to the kidney function. We can measure the kidney function really accurate with exogenous markers, for example, indoline or technetium. However, it's time consuming and expensive. The price for one measurement here in Denmark is approximate 500 euros. So instead, we try to use uh, endogenous markers we can measure in the blood. The normal used biomarkers in Denmark, it's creatinine, it's fast to analyze and the price is below one euro at all. In Denmark and worldwide, we come and use the CDK EPIC equation for uh, estimating kidney function. It's recommended by the Kidigo group, but also the Danish group of uh, the Danish Society of Nephrology. However, creatinine has many drawbacks. It's highly dependent on muscle mass, it's sex, but also race, and it's a pretty poor uh, predictor of future decline in kidney function. The CD-GABIC equation is developed in North America in a cohort where only 4% of participants were about 70 years and was developed to increase the accuracy of the patient with a higher kidney function above 60. We do know that this standard equation overestimate in old diabetic patient it's shown in a Swedish study. And our patient in the emergency department, they're characterized by high age, multimorbidity, low muscle mass, but also polypharmacy. So maybe this standard equation are not the right choice even for every single patient. We have alternatives, for example, the coca golf equation developed 14 years ago. It's shown to perform pretty bad across patient group and age group, but still recommended in some way from FDA to, to perform pharmacogenetic studies. Recent European journal equations have been developed to increase the accuracy of uh, GFR in older patients, for example, the BIS, FAS, and lund malmer equation. This nice study from France investigate the accuracy of this new recent equations. They conclude that the accuracy for patients with a kidney function below 45 is a little higher based on the newer equation compared to the city epic. However, the P30 is still only about 70 to, uh, to 75 percent. So there's still a lot of room for improvement. In this study from my PhD, we enrolled 118 uh, older patient with acute hip fracture. We try to compare the estimates based on creatinine. And what we observed was that the creatinine-based cdk equation yields approximately 8 to 10 milliliter higher in error rates compared to the newer recent equations. If we're swifting from the cdk equation to some of the more recent uh, creatinine-based equations, 
40 to 30 percent of all patients should be prescribed a lower dose of analgetic postoperatively. So at all, it matters what kind of equation we use. We do also have alternative biomarkers, for example, cystatin C. It's almost independent of muscle mass, age, and sex. It's recommended for patients with, with malnutrition, amputation patients, and children. The price in Denmark is approximate five euros, but it's rarely implemented. It's important to be aware of that cystatin C do also have drawbacks. It's highly dependent on chronic inflammation, diabetes, and the use of corticosteroids. So we have some other challenges here. In the most recent literature, it's described that the combination of creatinine and cystatin C are the most accurate for older patients at all. Last year, the INCIA group from US published the idea about using a panel of biomarkers instead to estimate GFR. It's based on four different markers, creatinine, cystatin C, beta-2 immunoglobulin, and beta-3 protein. But be also aware of these new novel markers do also have drawbacks. It's, for example, dependent on the lipid levels in the blood. So together with good colleagues, we designed the Optinam study. It's all about optimization of nutrition and medication for older medical patients. And 130 patients got their kidney function measured at our nuclear medication department. And last week, we received the results from the panel from the first 111 patients. So hopefully this panel can be used to increase the accuracy of GFR in this group of patients, or at least subgroups. And now I will show you the first results. At all, and may, for me a little surprising, the creatinine-based standard equation performed quite good across the cohort. It's also important to be aware of the P20 for like the entire group was, was higher when it was based on the panel. And it's the same with the P15. We have a P15, it's not shown here, but it was around uh, 45%. For the patient with a kidney function above 60, the creatinine-based equation performed quite okay. For the patient with a kidney function below 60, the LMR equation and the panel was less biased. And again, the P20 was significantly higher for the panel compared with all other equations. And if we're looking at the body mass index, may not surprising, but again, the LMR equation and the panel was less biased compared to the, the standard equation over here. And again, we saw a pattern that the P10 and P20 was higher uh, for, for the panel across BMI, but other, otherwise, the creatinine-based perform quite well. Another risk groups, it's patient undergoing amputation. In this group, we have, measure, uh, we have estimates of EGFR before and after amputation. The most important findings here is that the creatinine-based yield significantly higher than the combined already before surgery. There's a different approximate about 17 milliliters per minute. The panel yield almost the same as the combined equation. And the only equation affected by the amputation was the creatinine as expected. But this is only estimates. We do also have two case stories with patients who have got their kidney function measured post amputation. And the most important findings here is that the combination equation and the panel based on three or more markers yield approximately the same as the measured GFR. If we're looking at the creatinine alone, we have a risk of overestimating. And if we're looking at cystatine C alone, there is a risk of underestimating. So altogether, an early conclusion, the creatinine-based equation perform quite okay for patients with a measured GFR above 60 and for patients with a normal BMI. The alternative Lund-Malmö equation and the panel 
was least was less biased in patients with a kidney function below 60 and patients with a low BMI. The P10 and P20 was higher for the panel at all. And we was a little disappointing about the combination equation. It no, do, doesn't look like it, it add anything uh, to creatinine alone for the older for the older medical patient. And we suggest that the amputation patient's estimate should be based on at least two biomarkers if we do not have a measurement, but we need more knowledge. We do also have many plans for the future, and I think that all the overall goal will be to develop an algorithm to do this, this estimate more personalized. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Morten. Is there any questions in the audience for this? Uh, you were first. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Just in consideration, in your first slide, you stated that the, the cost of the IOXOL, for example, of the IOXOL procedure, is uh, 500 uh, euros. Uh, I, I, I would say that uh, it is cheaper that uh, in our laboratory the cost is about uh, 100 euros so this is 100 euros yeah. okay yes. the price was like the price from Danish hospitals when we measure the kidney function with technetium or before one time with chrome EDTA it will it includes staff time and and everything so so that can mm -hmm. be a bit different maybe well. in in Spain is is cheaper because the salaries are <laughs> <laughs> perhaps but but in many places I know that is true laboratory techniques uh, are rare ball uh -huh. uh, and it, yeah the the staff time are, are costful. Inulin is, is is more expensive, but uh, you actually think. I yeah, but but right now, due to my knowledge, the only like way to measure the kidney function, the capital religion, religion is by technetium. Uh, so the mm -hmm. price for for that setup. Mm. Hey, down here. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm a preclinical -clin scientist and know very little about these methods. Um, the, the panel with four markers, um, do you have any uh, data from the, from the literature or, or your knowledge experience that, that says that this kind of way of measuring GFR works perhaps better in, in other uh, patient populations? Um, it's a really good question. Um, at all the INCIA group published this equation last year and due to my knowledge this is some of the first data also because the the like the analyze of beta trace protein if it have to be validated it's not that it did not run that many places so i think we will see many papers over the next years but right now i think it's some of this is some of the newest um, but i know that uh, there's a, a group from belgium who have try to make a, a concept based on three markers. And they show approximately the same. If you add beta trace protein, your P10 and 20 will increase. I have a question. So, so your, your idea with the, with the panel is to, to, have, to have the, to, to, to in advance identify the risk patient or to have a panel performed in all risk patients or in all patients above a certain age or something? I think it should be for at all it should be for patients who got like some kind of renal mis risk medication prescribed and in a high risk of like having inaccurate estimates based on only creatine. For example, the patient with a low, low body mass. Uh, it could may also be be interesting to try if the accuracy are acceptable for patients uh, that have got cisplatin prescribed and so on. So I think it should be for, for some patients, not, not for all, because the panel also do have like a price. I think right now we can run it for like, it, it will be 50, 50 uh, euros. If it's a routine, it can maybe come down to 20, but it's still a lot uh, compared to creatinine al alone. Uh, so we have to figure out for which, which patient would like the right medication. The amputee, amputee patient will, will be 
maybe a, a group that will be worth to continue with because they are in a quite high risk for both renal, renal, renal impairment and they got a lot of medication prescribed. Well, thank you very much. I like the, the talk very much. I think that you identified you're working with the niche of patient at risk. So elder and, and with m m problems with muscle mass. And, and this is important. I think this is a group in which we, we need to be more precise. Uh, and I think that when you decide to use a P20, you, you need to consider that 20% means a lot in many cases. Mm -hmm. If you have 60 milliliters per minute, it means that the patient can be around 72 mm -hmm. or 40 something. And the, I think that still the P20 is too wide to be used as an acceptable limit, just an opinion. Mm. I, I, and I agree, and it was also the reason that yesterday I tried to look at P15, <laughs> uh, and of course it's a little lower, but, but still like at the same level as P30 for the creatinine base. So improved, but yeah, we can discuss if it's, an, if it's enough.